Hello, everyone, and welcome back to your third day of I Am Self Love Mirror Mirror Challenge. Um, this is exciting for me because I've done this class a lot over the years, but I'm doing it different this time. One, because I've grown and changed. Two, because I'm changing the book. Not the book this way, but I'm taking things that I think are super important and bringing it out. So we've done our mirror work. How was that for everybody? Can you put in the chat or say how it was? We're going to go through each day. We're just doing a compilation of catching up to make sure everybody's okay. Because I know the mirror can be frightening at times. Okay. All right. So I'm hearing good. Awesome, Anna. And I know that... Uh, Michelle. Okay, good. Allison. Okay, good. All right. So there's there's not really um well, it can be hard, but yeah. Okay, super. Okay, guys. So we moved from the mirror into our story because the mirror allows us to have stories that come up. What are some stories that come up for you guys when you look in the mirror? You can either put them in the chat or I'll even say them. I'm not good enough. You're a liar. You look awfully old. <laughs> You're ugly. <laughs> look at those wrinkles. <laughs> you know, things like that come up. Um, they even come up for people who have been doing the mirror work. Because remember, as we move through life, everything changes for us. We always have to do our work. So we stay on top of things. There are times I haven't had it experienced in a while and maybe because I'm very lenient on myself in the last year on the way I look since I went bald and everything else um, due to medicine. It's, but I used to always say, wow, look at those wrinkles. You're getting old. <laughs> and I'm, you know, self-love teacher. So I would catch myself and I would reverse it. And um, it's in your thinking. And I do want to say another thing that came to me last night, because I love these classes. I think about all the aspects. So when we're clearing away our thinking, there's something that comes up in the spiritual community a lot. And it's something like, and I don't like it because it's too new agey for me. I'm, I was raised a metaphysician, but very old school. You clean your thoughts and you keep them clean. You don't have to keep saying clear, cancel, delete. What the hell is clear, cancel, delete on what you said? So what that means to me is somebody is not watching their thinking when they say you'll catch, you'll hear spiritual people say clear, cancel, delete after they say something, or I believe this, and then it's, you know, negative. So it's clear, cancel, delete. So why are we allowing our stories of negativity about ourselves to move forward, to roll forward? So if we work on self-love, the mirror, our stories, all of this isn't it supposed to become a different relationship? So it does. But this tells us that we have to be on our work. We have to know what we want in life. We finally, finally get to create. So today, crossing the bridge. Yesterday, we spoke about the... Um, the story of the way you were raised or what came up in your experience. Some people I said, you know, because this is a shortened class, it's not like it's six weeks or six months, just do target points. So how many people, can I just see in the chat, um, I won't say your name, but can you guys just put stuff up so that we can read it to other people they can't see our chat on air? What are some of the things that came up for you during your writing last night, or even just thinking about it. You know, we all have plans. We all have stuff going on. This is very, very important, but not everybody gets to their work. So that's why we're going through it now too. What's some of the stuff that has come up for you? Good, bad, equal, Already a shift of awareness out of it, but it once was anything, everything, right? 
So since I have no takers, <laughs> I'll point out that if I was writing my story right now, well, my story looks really different. I am writing a story and my story is about my cancer journey. I'm finally ready to write it. And I'm on chapter four. I had to take two weeks off because all of a sudden something hit me and um, I was looking for the facts from one of my oncologists and their nurse sent me other information that sent me into a tailspin. And so I had to rebalance myself. So if I was just starting out here, like when I first just started out, my story, hi, Larry, thanks for joining us. I'm telling about how I would write my story now because um, nobody's sharing with me their stories or ideas. <laughs> and so if I was to write my story from um, let's say 15 years ago, even, okay, when I first started, or 16, when I first started coaching, I would probably have down newly divorced, looking for love, <laughs> sounds like a dating thing, <laughs> newly divorced, looking for love, um, learning to understand who that woman is that I see in the mirror. She's not as ugly as I thought. Um, creating a new life without my husband and my children. Even though I took care of my children for school every day, it's still, they weren't living with me. Those would be in my story. Um, wanting to connect in coaching as a coach faster, which took me like three years to get on top of all my clients go from a Facebook coach to a online coach, those would probably be in my story. So today, writing the story with you guys, crossing the bridge, or remember yesterday was about our story that we're living. And then today is about the dream, believe, create the expansion of your life. So today's story is more of a more of a power punch of what you want to create in your life. We did have a little thing here. Um, okay. Um, we all have, as the chat was saying, we all have hard times about our stuff. Um, yeah, you are a pretty decent person and you need to stop hiding. Definitely. So these are things that come out in our story. This is why, and thank you for sharing that, because this is why I ask you guys to look. This is why we share, because there are moments of breakthrough where we've been shitting on ourselves over and over and over again. And then we realize, I am not, I am not that person that I kept beating up. I am greater than that person. And then we go and create our life. So in the dream, believe, believe create process, um, a very powerful experience is to take that, those five, those five pillars of life, which are spirituality, relationship, home, body, and work, and expand them out. Until you expand them out, you don't know what you want in life. As little kids, we sat in school and we daydreamed and our teachers would yell at us, pay attention, come back here, what are you doing? You know, you're always daydreaming. Well, those daydreamers are our creative people today. So they're artists, they're mathematicians, they're music musicians, they're scientists, they're engineers, they're architects, they're artists, they're happy people, they're, you know, what is wrong with dreaming something? It allows us to see what we possibly might want. And when I say possibly, it's because people on the, on this watching and people on the replay, and I'm hoping you guys on YouTube, when you see this, that you understand there's different, we've had so much drastic difference in our age groups, in our, I almost said genders, well, that too, I guess, um, in our um, 
spaces of, you know, I'm the last of the baby boomers. And then there's Gen X or something or Gen something. And then there's Xers and then there's this and then there's, I've lost track. I mean, I could find out really quick because I do have a research app that I use. But the point is, is that we are all different and we're all looking at everybody else. I found out recently in the last couple of years that the younger people, they don't like the older people because they feel we destroyed the planet for them. So you can't, you know, you just have to focus on your own stuff is my point. So if you dreamed a life that was amazing and great, what would it look like to you? Even one aspect. When I did the dream, believe, create process, when it came through me in 2008, what I discovered was my spirituality, I was really happy with it. But I wanted to be a spiritual teacher and I wanted to lecture like my grandmother. And I wanted to be more in service to people for the healings that we do, the physical healings, the emotional healings. Okay, so I stopped that one really fast and jumped to the next one because I was like, I'm okay there. I want that, but I'm okay. So I jumped to, you know, and everybody's going to be different, but I'm just sharing so you understand. Then I jumped to the relationship. And in a matter of moments, I saw that my husband was no longer my husband. My husband had changed so much. Not only did he have an affair on me, but... And I gave him another five years, like our marriage counselor asked, and I loved him. I still love him today. He's a wonderful human being. We're great friends. But he didn't, he lost his life and I needed in the sense of to live. And I needed spark and energy and I needed to get out of that wheelchair and I needed to rebuild my life. And two years, they said I would be dying. The doctors, they called me into my their office and said, your organs are closing. You have less than two years to live. So I fought for my life. And then after, I also saw a man come in that looks very much like my husband today. Weird, weird, weird. But when we open inward to the space we can see and create, um, my home, I didn't want that. My body home also. So, I mean, my home that I lived in, I wanted something different. I was happy enough. I had stuff. I had my children. But here I had seen a moment or two before that my home, who was partly my husband, was now going to be different. I knew I had to make a change. So when it also came to my body, and when we think about this as our home and our temple, and we actually live here all the time, we never get rid of our body. That was a different situation. I was in a wheelchair. Um, I was dying in two years. I had excess weight on me from being in the wheelchair, not caring and eating whatever the hell I wanted. So when I saw I needed to be like how I was physically, active wise, out of the wheelchair, being the mother to my children that they absolutely deserved, that's when my life took a, a really big turn in the Dream Believe Create. My work stuff, I, I was in limbo. I was leaving a company that I started that was a medical supply company. I had all my uh, contracts that brought me income came through my husband's work. And since I was leaving him, I knew that that would close down. So building a business, I had no idea where I wanted to go. It took me about six months into my healing to realize I am a coach, whatever that means. And in 2008, it was still an early practice. People didn't really know about coaches and stuff. And so I built a beautiful business. What do you guys want to create in your life? Right? So do the dream, believe, create process. And then over the next two days, we're also going to expand more into the book and the practices in there over the next several days. But no, no, sorry, my dog stole my underwear and ran. <laughs> okay, um, somebody else will have to chase him. <laughs> so, so 
this is why it's also I'd like to stop for a moment and open up these lines here with you guys, because I can't help you or help the people watching this later on if if we don't communicate about your story, about what you're writing. Does anyone want to come forward and ask questions, share what they're doing? You don't even have to have your camera on. You can just have a voice. Nobody will know who you are. I will. Oh, thank you. Hi, Mia, everyone. Hi. So um, I I have been thinking off and on for, for a little while about, you know, with my sister or my friends jokingly say, we could write a book or we could write a story. Um, and I always thought that when I was young, really quickly, I had like dual things that I really was into. I mean, I was interested in science, but I really loved art. So, well, deciding that science makes more money. So that was my schooling education career for the most part. And I got really, really tired. I was a chemist for, I don't know, nearly 30 years and um, actually retired a little early. Um, but I have a feeling and your story has actually um, inspired me to write about what I'm going through right now. And it's not as, God, as dire as, as yours was, but I got thrown into someone I know and love dearly calls it a, um, a shit storm. Mm -hmm. So, and it's basically taking the Michelle that was before that. And I live in Spain now and everything that was planned out and was going to happen is not going to happen now. But all right, so you get decimated, you're at rock bottom, and then as far as I'm concerned, the only way to go is up. So here I am. And I've been kind of, you know, limping along and, and trying to get my, you know, my myself back and to learn to love myself, dear God. Um, but also to build a life that I love. And part of it is doing that circle thing of going back to what I ignored for the most part for decades was going back into something artistic. Um, so it's going to be the Michelle living in a country where she barely knows the language, but still thriving, still loving this place and the things that, that, you know, I, I fell in love with the country. Um, I'm kind of carving out my little niche here, but also to bring forth those things that I love, like art, Beautiful. which right now is mostly photography, but I got my sketchbooks and I know I'll get back to them. Um, and it, I mean, it's me, you know, from what you and I had talked about in our session, um, sessions is even taking that a little bit further because I do like teaching. And so craft something out of that. So not, not, I don't know, not quite the Phoenix, you know, coming from the flame of the Use that storm. energy. But, Use that energy. But yeah. The Phoenix energy. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like that. I like that analogy. Yeah. It's really beautiful. I've used the Phoenix energy many times over the last, well, my life, but also over the last four years, because at times it looked like I was crashing and burning and I was going <laughs> to die. And I was like, no way I'm going to rise again, you know? So yeah. I, I love that analogy of the Phoenix and take it, embrace it. And, and in the Phoenix, the rise, the rise is the gift, the upcoming, the coming back to center, the rebalancing yourself, the power of I've done this look at me I'm alive right and thriving yes yeah that is so mm -hmm. beautiful Michelle yeah it's a it's a journey and a path that we don't understand until we get tossed into it and here you were from the United States brought to a different country right um yep everything fell apart and yet you have the perseverance and the ability within yourself to rise, literally. Yeah. 
you know, the yeah. deep pockets, which comes later this week, if I can just share with you all, so you'll come and, and use that process is it's in this book, Mirror Mirror, that you guys have. It's about that moment when you've fallen and you can't get up anymore. Somebody dies and you just collapse. Somebody, you know, steals from you your all your money and you just collapse. Where are you going to be the rest of your life down? I've had to rise with my first husband stealing a hundred grand from me. I've had to rise from cancer. I've had to rise from other death things. So what? I can rise because I choose. I choose to forgive and to love. Choose. Choose. Yeah. And and a little caveat of the thing that went on when I got divorced from my first husband and that money got. What happened was with love, a new relationship was built between two humans who shared children. It wasn't overnight. It's been what, 15, 16 years, but it shifted so much that that individual who's retired now, was able to take care of me for a year and a half on chemo, even though I was married to someone else. So when we change and shift our story, no matter what it is, it has to be based in love and self-love. They're the same. It's just focusing and working on self so that we can work on the other stuff with other people, right? or other beings like the whiny puppy behind me. So it's it's really about being in that space of love and understanding yourself, making the allowances, as Michelle said, rising back up after you feel like you've burnt to the ground and creating a life that loves you back. It's possible. It's not even just doable. It's magnificent. But this is where we have to choose things. Faith is such a powerful feeling when you have it and such a mystery if you waver. Most people waver on faith. They don't understand the depths of faith. I've been told, um, you know, from other spiritual coaches and all this over the last couple, well, over the years, um, that I have such childlike faith that that's why I had a miraculous healing the first time in four months when I was dying. And, you know, it was very much moments with God, but then it came back. So where does that faith go? The cancer came back because of a gene that we didn't know at the time that was resistant to treatment. So where do you think my faith went to? When that came back, I had to rebuild it somewhat. It was there. God was there. That's my faith, God, and my understanding and my connection. So powerful. But I still had to rebuild my faith of who I am as a healer, as a person with cancer, all of that. We have to have faith to understand the power of who we are. Guess what else we have to have? We're actually, <laughs> I'm bringing a four-person show in December for the holidays um, on faith, hope, love, and miracles. And so um, what do we have to have for all of this? Faith, hope, love, and miracles. So hope, what is that? That's the desire, the craving, the knowledge, even the awareness, like the sister or the cousin to faith, that it's going to happen. And then love. Love yourself so much that you understand your story, your life, everything can change. A lot of us have been destitute at times. Faith and love and hope and miracles brings back that money flow. The same with health, the same with our joy, the same with our life moving or the blood inside of us, right? So if we brought that stuff to our story, especially now in the dream belief create, wouldn't it look a lot different of what you could create in your life? The magic, the majesty, everything. It would be so completely different. Um, 
it was written here in the chat. I'll have to read it first because it was directly to me. So isn't that, it's beautiful that when we can, if I can just say this, because nobody knows who sent this. Um, it says the thing, I think this is really lovely. Okay, she said I can share, or the person said I could share. Um, the thing that has come from writing the story is recognizing all the ways I acted through. Been guided by love and faith now that she said that. She understands. She's aware of that. And the act of self-love, it gave back to me. See, this is this is the nugget here. Exactly what she experienced. This is why I do these free, these free classes and stuff. Because I want you all to experience, even if it's for the first time, the fifth time, the tenth time, the hundredth time, the thousandth time, the fifty thousandth time. I want you to experience what love in your body feels like, what loving yourself unconditionally feels like. See, love has no conditions. We put it on ourselves, right? So without conditions, it circulates back to us automatically. It's always there. It's us with our faith that looks somewhere else. One reason why I'm being brought back to the somatic work right now one reason why the somatic experience that Lori and I teach in the academy for the nervous system is to calm us. So as I'm moving around and telling you guys about faith and hope and love and reading this beautiful piece that was written here that I shared about it coming back to self-love, I started feeling a little bit like, I wonder if some, and somebody might be, and this is why I'm feeling it, I wonder if somebody's feeling a little panicky or resistant to those things because they're so beautiful. Like, yeah, it doesn't always work. This is where the somatic work of grounding yourself, like I'm safe. I'm right here at my desk. I'm safe. I'm safe. I'm safe. I'm safe. Or if you get stressed out, start to breathe. Here's the candle. Breathe in, blow out the candle. Breathe in, blow out the candle. So it's That's when you're activated and it will lower you back down to a calm space. Believe it or not, the word love, self-love, this talk, people want it, but it still scares the hell out of them. Why is that, everybody? I think it's because of our upbringing, right? The one that we re-nurture ourselves, the one that we reparent ourselves. This is all what you're doing here is a gift for you, literally a gift for you. In fact, next week's talk will actually be, and we're going to talk about on um, Talk Tuesday, I said to Lori, I want to bring out and add into the academy specifically, self-love is somatic experiencing or somatic experiencing is self-love because it's not been connected together yet. And so you obviously know that one of those new digital books that are like 40 pages will be coming out soon for you. You know, we've got Lori's Eat, Love, or Eat, Eat Heal, Love, uh, Your Nervous System, The Greatest You, The Mirror, Mirror Book, and now we're working on one about self-love is somatic experiencing. So you are and you have everything you need right here, right here in this very moment to calm yourself to nurture yourself and to get your story written and done. All right, everyone. Um, the dream, believe, create process is in the book there. So go through it, feel it. There's things in there that when I wrote this in 2016, um, and then I think it was updated in, in 2020, I think, and now it's going to go into its second edition. Um, there are things in there that I can't even remember because I don't read it all the time. And there's so much work that I teach. So go through it. Love it. We do teach it in the Academy. We have uh, two modules on it because in the Academy, we actually want you to, when you come in, to choose something you want to create that year while you work with us or eight months. So it's learning all the material to have the greatest you experience. And also, yes, you have to leave. Thank you so much. 
um, and have all the greatest experience that you deserve. So when you create your life through love, what is there else? I'm, a, I'm obviously a God girl, a love girl, but I work at love. I work at my higher self. I work at the, my thoughts. Growing up as a metaphysician, we used to have to do studying every day, every day. And um, the children would have to get together and I was the youngest and the oldest ones would read and then we would pray. And yeah, it was a uh, fundamentalist, I guess you'd call it in a way, um, strict fundamentalist. But what I got from that was a deep rooted connection of who I am and who I'm connected to, which is God and the image and likeness of God, just like all of you are. And so in that experience, if I'm angry, hurt, and I was a molested child, I had a molester for six years. So if I had that, how come I was still a God girl? Well, it balanced me out. It saved my life to come back to center. Then when I realized that loving myself or allowing myself love literally was what was supposed to be. If I believe that I am the image and likeness of my creator, how else am I supposed to be? Am I supposed to be injured, hurt, um, abused, scared, frightened? No. We stand up and we get tall and we are just like, no more. And you change your thoughts. And what I was starting to say about my childhood that I that was prominent or important here was we were taught to be aware of what is coming into our thoughts. Even as a little child, it was called Stan Porter at your door of thoughts. I know that Anna, you've heard me talk about that for years on, on, in classes and in the, in the call. So you have to be aware of what you're going to allow in. And this is why you need to create and know who you are because somebody else's experience is not yours that you have put into your system as part of who you are, right? The whole upbringing thing of, oh yeah, that was mom, dad, Mr. Magoo's, uh, Aunt Sally's, whatever. But what do you want in your life? Not what your family wanted for you or your friends or your clergymen or anything else. What do you want? How do you want your life to go? Okay, guys, um, any more questions or anything about your assignment today, which is the dream, believe, create. I want you to work it tonight and tomorrow. We're going to talk tomorrow, but we're also about this, but we're also going to talk about the deep pockets because that's really, really important to know how to get out of that space of I've fallen and I can't get up syndrome. Literally, there is a method on how to get out of that space. So if you haven't read it already, try to just peek at it. It's They're not very long. The books, you know, is only like 67 pages. So the, that chapter might even be just 10 pages and the print's pretty big. Um, so look at it, do the work so that when you are here, you can bring things to me and I can coach you. I can help you. That's what this is about, is stepping from where you are into a different place that you want to be. Okay, so crossing the bridge is leaving the old story behind and creating your new life. Even in the book, I say, take my hand and I'll help you across the bridge. So do the work so that I can, you can take my hand tomorrow and I can help guide you across the bridge. Okay, beautiful. Thanks, Anna. Okay, any more questions or anything? Because this, this time is for you guys. And if you don't use it, it's okay. We'll just say goodbye. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. But is there anything about your story, your past one, or your future writing story of how you'd like your life to grow? And instead of having it be, and you can have it all the way through to the end of your life, but if you even just want to focus on five years, just the next five years, what is that going to look like for you? You may hear things, and, and I would suggest that you get calm in your 
in your, just a moment, Anna, thank you, honey. Um, I would suggest that you get calm and in your productive space, your quiet center, uh, maybe meditate so you can have it be a process. It is a process but allow it to come through. I remember hearing, and this is very strange, you might hear things that you don't understand or they seem really weird. I heard back then, you are the white Oprah. And I said, what? I'm Hispanic, I'm not white, what are you talking about? And in 2018, um, how many years later? 10, 10 years later, I found out through my DNA that I am not Hispanic, that I, I'm all white. <laughs> everything it's, it's a little scary because it's like where did my latinness go so we know before we know what's the truth about us so if something comes up don't negate it and push it away oh you're interesting i'm gonna put you over here for a little bit until i understand it but don't reject what comes forward because it's your if you're in that space it's your beautifulness your your connectedness to the divine that's coming through. Yes, Anna. Lovely, Anna. Uh, yeah. Yes, Hi, Anna. thank you for the invitation to share. Because you, you asked something that triggered something in my mind to ask or to share right. about and to ask your input on. So like you're talking about the story, you know, the story of yesterday, the story of today, and the story of the future that we're wanting to create. And the, the thing that I've been experiencing with my story is like this, just the cycles, you know, like, there are these cycles of, you know, having the clarity and being kind of feeling in, you know, feeling coherent and feeling balanced. But then I tend to kind of, you know, it's almost like it's, uh, it feels like it's just like a chemistry within me or something like that, or constitution that sometimes there's this kind of inertia that kicks in or this dragging that kicks in and, or this, you know, old patterns of experience or emotions or affect that kick in. And, um, you know, I'm working on just really embracing it and just, you know, asking it to, 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 to inform me what it has to offer. But I, I get really, to be honest with you, Mia, I, I get very, um, like, I'm surprised that it keeps coming up with all the work that I've done. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I rather not have it. <laughs> okay. Any, any thoughts about that? You're tired of all the work that you've done. So what I, my biggest thought is it's got to be a lot more playful, honey, and a lot more fun, the work. It's not as stimulating and fun for you. Um, why don't you and I have a conversation privately, if you like? Um, let, let's do that. I'm up for that, Anna, if you are. Thank you. Um, because I think that there's more here than just, um, then you just don't want to do the work. Because if we know, and I think you know this, that we have to always be doing our work to elevate. Otherwise, we slide like the deep pockets. We slide back down the hill. And we're like, I've fallen and I can't get up. And once I was happy or once I was balanced or once I like this. And now where did it go? It's just a stage, not just in the emotional and mental. Well, in the emotional and mental, but it can also be a biological stage too, honey. Something could be coming up in your hormones that are moving you to feeling that, or you've had an experience in your life in the last six months, a year that has questioned your, I'm going to do quote unquote, your faith. <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? There's a yeah. reason, there's a yes, reason why this has happened. And I've seen Baby, if I'm going to share this story, <laughs> I've seen my husband go through a tremendous uh, disconnect and then reconnect to self. Um, so much so that it it had to separate for a while in 2020. And we all go through this, honey. Don't slam yourself. Don't uh, do negative things. Keep doing all the things that feel good to you and light and energetic and definitely you and I are gonna have a talk hopefully this week if you're up for it okay thank you all right honey you're welcome okay everybody so remember when we create our lives it's supposed to be about fun light light energy it's not always so then we get through the dark heavy times and then we come back into the sunshine I always teach in a 
in classes to look for the sunlight. We are beautiful flowers as if we rotate like sunflowers to the sun. Where is the sun? The sun is that divinity within us that shines out. So we are actually beacons of light that we have our own light to follow as we burst through. If you can imagine a light coming through your head to illuminate your path ahead of you. You have your path ahead of you. You have the knowledge to write your future in the storytelling. It's not to negate or disapprove or throw away the past story. It's to build upon it and use the story to support your growth. Even if it's, I don't want to be like that, or I don't want that experience ever again. That's okay. That's a starting point to your new story. Okay. It's not about the negativity, but it is about witnessing what you want different. And again, the dream, believe, create process is supposed to be a process where you go in and you're relaxed and you go through the visualizations and you ask yourself the questions that I've, I have in there. So do that. Enjoy. Even if you get to a place that you're not enjoying your moments, your life, what can you do? Write down everybody. Everybody needs to have a go-to plan. It's not a backdoor plan. It's a go-to plan. If they get in a place where things are rough, what makes you happy? First of all, there's, and I'm going to say it really quickly, and we went through the pandemic. So, you know, this is the go-tos. There's funny shows to watch on TV. You have great friends to connect with. And if you don't, then put that in your list to create for your future. Um, sometimes, and I know that our my co-partner in uh, the Greatest You Academy teaches freedom from emotional eating. But sometimes we, and it's not about the food, guys. It's about the emotional connection to it. Um, so you can create like your next meal as a party for yourself. What would you like to have in your meal? Would you like to have appetizers, maybe a wine or no wine? Would you like to have Italian, Spanish or something else for dinner? Or and would you like to treat yourself to a little dessert that night because you're having your party? And it's not a party that you have three times a day. <laughs> it can be, but you're going to have to then learn how to watch your eating on that. <laughs> but it is about making everything exciting. The preparation of the food even becomes exciting. The planning of it, because guess what? You are that important. We do this for others. Why not for ourselves? I do this stuff for myself. And my husband and I live in different corners of the United States, not by choice per se, but because of my medical stuff, I'm here in our other home. And he's a diver and he has to be in the hot waters in Miami to, to work. So there are times when I'll do this and I'll come here and I'll either meet with a girlfriend or him, or I'll just enjoy my happy dinner or lunch by myself. Can you imagine people actually having fun eating by themselves? Most of the time, people don't go out to eat. They're scared. They're nervous. They're uncomfortable. What would it be like to feel so comfortable with yourself that you even get a little bit cuckoo and no, it sounds funny when I say cuckoo, I don't mean cuckoo, but you know, we talk to ourselves as we become more extroverted in our love of self we even talk to ourselves hey that was really good yeah it was and then you cut it off otherwise it gets too crazy <laughs> but you have to be what my point is you have to be fully engaged that's it fully engaged in what you're doing and who you are and why not you know I have girlfriends that create a whole ceremonial table with candles and flowers and their crystals and then they'll make their beautiful dinner I don't go that far, but I would love to actually come to think of it. If I had the, the setup, I have all my kids at home with all their spouses. <laughs> so it's a little hard to have my own private space, but I mean, I do. So what would you like to create? 
What have you seen in your life that others have had that you've wanted? Not in a jealousy, but wow, even if it's on TV, even if it's a royal thing and you're like, I could never have anything like that. So choose a couple of flowers to put on your table. Doesn't have to be a big bouquet. Could be one flower, two flowers. And look at the flower and enjoy the flower while you're eating your food. Do you hear what I'm saying? Make this about a body, mind, and soul experience. Turn on music you love or watch a funny show once you're through with your food and you have, you know, fully been aware of what you're doing. We don't eat to eat. We eat to eat, but we don't eat without consciousness. We have to be aware of what we're doing. Otherwise, why why eat just to feed the body if you're not paying attention to the del delicacies of what you're actually eating? It can be a delicacy. Okay, so um, write your stories, live your lives, and love. That's what the I Am Self-Love Mirror Mirror Challenge is about, is about connecting the love back to you, even your reflection and work back to you all right everybody much love <coughs> and i'm going to turn off the recorder